So why are jobs at Tata Steel in Port Talbot in South Wales under threat again? Well, it's that drive to reduce CO2. The aim is that steel plants must produce steel while being carbon neutral and without burning fossil fuels. What fossil fuel is used in steel production? Well, it's something called coke, C-O-K-E, which comes from coal. That's not coke as in Coca-Cola the drink or coke as in the drug cocaine. Coal is C-O-A-L. So the aim is to switch to carbon neutral furnaces. The steel production is responsible for 7% of greenhouse gases in the world. I think this is quite a challenge given the huge temperatures are needed to smelt steel. The news item was more about the threat of job losses. I know that that's a concern, but you can't have government supporting an industry indefinitely. But I agree it's fair for the steel industry to ask for government support, government intervention, if they're asked to become carbon neutral. There is a steel plant just opened in Sweden, the first one of its kind in Europe, which will produce so-called green steel meaning steel produced entirely by electrically powered blast furnaces. If we want to continue to make trains, planes, cars, buildings, electrical appliances and weapons, and we want to be carbon neutral, then there's no choice but to do this, of course. This week there have also been two terrible disasters in the world, which I just wanted to acknowledge. The first one, of course, was the earthquake in Morocco, which was just heartbreaking. A friend of mine was staying in Marrakesh last week. She sent me videos of people sitting and lying on blankets on the pavements in Marrakesh and videos of damage to buildings in the city. But it seems that the biggest losses of life were out in the villages in the Atlas Mountains where whole areas were devastated and whole villages appear to have been lost. I saw interviews with men who'd been working away and who returned to find that their whole family had died in the earthquake. Just horrible. The other disaster, of course, was the floods in Libya. The city of Derna, D-E-R-N-A, appears to have been hardest hit. And as I record this podcast, the loss of life and the devastation are still being counted. The floods happened in part because of record rainfall. Storm Daniel hit Libya on Sunday and brought 40 centimetres of rain within 24 hours. Usually rainfall for this area for the whole of September is around 1.5 millimetres. So these were extraordinary circumstances. The other problem was that dams, D-A-M-S, also burst further upstream than the affected cities. A dam is a barrier which holds back water. And the dams upstream of these cities were just not able to hold the water back. I attach the BBC News article, which shows the view from the air before and after the floods. You may have seen these pictures already, but you can clearly see the devastation. 